Hello and welcome to Dark Side Scenix. In this video I'm reviewing the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt laser cutter. Now six months ago I reviewed the 22 watt version with separate enclosure so I was very keen to see what improvements Creality have made. You can see the difference in size between the two setups so it's very useful if your space is limited. I received this rather large heavy box in the post so started to unbox the contents. Everything was very well packaged and as I'd reviewed one of these before I was quite familiar with some of the contents. This is the light and the camera bar, which are just two of the features Creality have added to the new enclosed version. These bars create the cutting bed, so there's no need to buy an extra honeycomb panel like this one. The final parts in the box are the frame and the sides for the enclosure. The setup starts with joining together the metal frame followed by the rear orange panel. Then the front access panel is pushed into the frame and then held in place with the light bar. This is a big improvement over the previous version which uses a zip. This is the 40 watt laser module and in the pack I received there was also a 1.6 watt laser module. This is useful for smaller, finer engraving jobs. It's quick and easy to attach the laser module using these two thumb screws. Followed by the air assist pipe and the cable which connects it to the body. Initially I put the bars close together which is better for smaller jobs. However, to cover the entire cutting area you need to space them out. The pull out drawer is another new feature which I'll show in use later in the video. The panel with the fan fits on the left of the unit. It looks like you can install it on the right but you need to remove the fan to change the direction. Once the fan cable is plugged into the unit you can install the extraction hose. The air pump is attached to the unit via an air hose and a power cable. You can switch the fan between on or automatic and there's also a dial which controls the airflow. On the other side of the machine you'll find the power connection, a TF card slot and a USB-C port. And for safety there's a key lock and an emergency stop button. Before using the machine it's sensible to pop onto the Creality website and download the latest firmware. First I update the laser module. When it's done the lights will turn green. and then the machine is updated. The light is a really nice feature and it can be set as on or automatic. The camera needs to be configured with your software but the instructions are very clear. The pattern card and the plywood used for the camera configuration were included in the pack. You can see in the top right of my light band software that there is a visual of the laser bed. This can be transferred to the light band design area and I find this particularly useful especially when trying to avoid waste when using up scrap material. If the machine is in the middle of a job and the front panel or drawer is accidentally opened, the laser cutter will automatically stop. The alarm will sound until you close the access panel or drawer and then you can just resume your job. The guidance states that this can cut through 20mm basswood. I had some 18mm pine so I thought it would be a good test to see if it could cut through on one pass. 
it had no issue at all in cutting wood this thick, so it could be used for creating house signs or something similar. I was unsure which type of model I would make for this video. Fortunately I saw this walkway in Dartmouth and thought it would be a nice challenge to try and make a similar building. There are other buildings in Totnes which I can use for inspiration and although time is limited due to the deadline for this video I should be able to make a prototype. Compared to previous enclosures the visibility on this one is so much better. This is where the draw feature is really useful. If you haven't added tabs to some of the small pieces, they'd often just fall into the honeycomb, but now you can just pull out the draw. These pieces are to make the pillars. It would be easier to use a wooden rod, but the challenge here is to make a flat pack laser kit. The hole in the center is measured to be the same size as a cocktail stick, so the pieces just slide on and then glued in place. A small amount of glue is used in between each piece until I reach the desired height. It's given a light sanding before I add some grey primer. When the primer is dry I can brush on some filler. To create the texture I stipple it with a clean brush. Then it's just a case of brushing on a selection of grey washes. In another review video they mentioned putting a piece of metal in the bottom of the drawer which should protect it from the laser. I thought it was definitely a good idea. Another positive point of the drawer is how easy it is to slide in a large piece of plywood. This is 3.6mm plywood and I'm creating a small baseboard for the model to sit on. The extractor fan works really well, I've got mine connected to a vent in my garage door. I would usually use wood glue here but for speed I'm using super glue. The next step was to create some shop windows and doors using 1.5mm basswood. It's nice to see that the powerful laser can still do quite intricate work like this. However, this wood is very brittle when it's this thin, so I would use MDF next time. This piece is the shop floor and also the paving slabs outside. It's covered with wood glue and then a small amount of super glue around the edges to speed up the process. The back and the sides of the ground floor are glued in place before we can add the shop front. Here I'm just checking that the shop front fits correctly and you can also see where the pillars are going. The pavement is given a coat of grey primer followed by the road. The shop front is painted in burnt umber before being glued. Watered down filler is brushed on to take away the wood texture and make it look more like a pavement. The road texture is created using ammo asphalt paint. When that's fully dry I can follow it up with a grey enamel wash. I cut some new doors from MDF to make them slightly stronger and I'm painting them in quite vivid colours. The letterbox section is painted in gold and then glued from the back. 
I usually work in 1 to 76 scale, but on this occasion I'm working in 1 to 43. These pieces are glued together to create the sash windows. I work in a Tudor building and it has lots of sash windows, and I believe they were added in the Georgian era. I also created some thin MDF frames to sit inside the cutouts. And the sash windows are glued to the back of those frames. It's given a spray of white primer before being glued. Moving back to the pillars, the pieces that were cut out of the base and the first floor are glued onto either end of the pillar. This helps to guide each pillar into the right place. A simple roof section is cut out of the 3.6mm ply before moving on to the beams. I wanted to keep the design simple but needed to avoid the beams being perfectly straight. This is more of the 1.5mm basswood. I mixed up a batch of black and brown acrylic paint and then brushed it onto each section. I created something similar for the triangular roof section and then attached it with superglue. The sections between the beams were brushed with watered down filler and then painted white. The pavement was given a final coat of brown and grey washes. Some roof tile strips were created with poly back laser board. And when that was finished it was given a coat of grey spray. I need to do a huge amount of work to improve this design but it is a prototype and it's amazing what you can achieve with a laser cutter. Please see the video description for more details on these laser cutters or put a comment below if you want to ask me a question. If you like the videos on this channel please do like and subscribe, your support is appreciated. Thanks for watching.